Well, welcome back to Photo Tuts. Uh, my name's Simon Plant, and today we're going to look at the Puppet Warp and the many uses that it has. Well, it had to happen at some point, and I've finally uh, upgraded uh, Photoshop. Um, I've gone over to Creative Cloud, and uh, I've ditched the uh, CS3, which I've used for years. I'm quite happy with that. Um, but uh, obviously, the, the uh, subscription models come into play, and there's a few bits and pieces I wanted. So I've now uh, I've now changed over, and um, there's obviously some really cool features in uh, in uh, the Creative Cloud Photoshop. And one of them is the Puppet Warp. I know it's been around a little while, but it's enabled me to look at different ways um, I can use this. And one of the ways is to um, correct um, any problem images, uh, such as this one. Now, this image is one of the first composite, composited images I created. It was shot in Greece in about 2006, 2007. And it's made up of probably about 12 different images. Um, looking back now, obviously, you know, it's one of my early ones. And, there's a, you know, it's not perfect, you know, and I've come a long way since then, thankfully. But the one thing that used to bug me about this picture was the church. Now, if I zoom in a little bit, on the church here you may not automatically first of all uh, notice what I'm talking about but if I just zoom in I'll just come back out a little bit if you notice the church it looks a little bit awkward especially the roof here now the reason for that is quite simple this church I was, I was driving through the mountains and I came across this little church and it had um, a, a, a fence around it a wire fence if I remember rightly and I could not get inside the fence or, or certainly if I could it was a very tight space so the only way for me to photograph this church was with a, a, approximately a 20 millimeter lens and getting down you know quite low to put the lens through an aperture in a gate um, so that's all fine I've got the picture but of course the picture had a lot of distortion it you wide angle lens looking slightly up at the church um, you're gonna get distortion and that's what we've got here and it's always bugged me about the picture it always looks slightly awkward within the image um, because of that distortion. So I decided um, we'd have a go using the Puppet Warp at correcting that today. So what we need to first of all do is to clean up the background. Now the reason for that is this this is the final image here, uh, this layer. I've stripped out all the all the other bits and pieces and just flattened it down just so it's nice and clean. Um, and what we need to do is obviously cut out the church, which I've already done, and then we, we're going to manipulate that church, obviously remove some of that distortion. Um, and to do that, we need the background to be nice and clean. So what I've done is very quickly, uh, using the content aware, um, I've filled in the gaps behind the church. It doesn't look brilliant, I'll be honest with you. I have a bit of a problem with content aware and the fact that it doesn't work, in my opinion. Uh, on, on very small details, it, it works to a certain degree, but maybe I'm just very fussy, but um, it certainly doesn't work straight out of the box, uh, in my experience. But for this tutorial, um, that's what I've used, and it, it isn't perfect, as I said, but it'd be fine just to show and demonstrate this uh, technique. So we have the three layers, the background layer, the original, then the background where I've uh, I've obviously cloned over where the church was. So we've got a nice clean background and then we've got our church on its own, um, on its own layer there isolated. What I'm going to do is just duplicate uh, the church, command and control J. I'm also going to unlock it because if it's locked, it means we can't manipulate the layer. The uh, the puppet layer will be greyed out, the puppet warp, as it is here. So we need to make sure that's uh, unlocked. If they are locked, I I've generally tend to lock a lot of my layers together. Um, so uh, that's the reason why you need to turn that off. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to move nothing. Um, and then we can literally go into edit and then into the puppet warp, which is now active. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is just take you through some of the settings of the Puppet Warp. Okay, so we've now entered the Puppet Warp. You can see we've got this kind of mesh, like a netting over the church, which shows you we are actually in uh, Puppet Warp. And we can turn that off, there's a little tip box here, if you can turn that off if you wish. And you might want to do that in a second when we start laying down pins. But I'm going to give you just a, a quick overview of some of the settings here uh, in Puppet Warp. The first one we've got is uh, is Mode. Um, that kind of... Um, that kind of um, allows you to just how kind of stiff 
the the uh, the the mesh is and it's, if you wanted to say uh, do a lot more kind of um, flexible movements with the puppet warp you could put it on to distort so if you were doing sort of a, a caricature or something and you wanted some really wild movements you could put it on distort or if you wanted to be a little bit more precise and you don't want to do overdo it you could put it on rigid um, but uh, the other option is just leave it on the default which is normal um, density um, that's really shows allows you to add or remove more control points um, if we can zoom in a little bit here uh, if I move it to more points it means we've got more control points that we can lay down and if you want fewer obviously you can do fewer um, the other reason for using this depending again depending on the image uh, it just really depends on how how much distortion you want to add in um, and the density helps you achieve that um, for the most part again leave it on normal and if you find you need more control then put it on just put it up to more points bear in mind the more points you lay down and the more pins you lay down the more um, the more computer power you need to process that information so just bear that in mind the expansion uh, basically allows you to modify the area that the uh, the mesh covers so if I increase the pixels here you can see that uh, the mesh is actually getting bigger over the image and uh, by bringing it back down the default is two pixels uh, you can uh, also reduce it further by contracting it so it's actually making the mesh smaller over our image the default as I said is, is about two pixels again it depends on uh, the image but basically it allows you to uh, affect the, how responsive the the mesh is, um, and how much control, precise control you have over the adjustments. Uh, again, it's one of those things that you're going to have to uh, really just uh, adjust and uh, try with different images. Uh, all depends on the image you're doing and the effect you want. Uh, as with all these uh, settings, the other setting is the uh, show mesh checkbox and this can be useful sometimes but a lot of people find it um, a little bit uh, confusing so it, uh, it when you start laying down pins which we'll cover in a second it might be worth you turn this off uh, but uh, that's how you do that you just toggle it quite simple the uh, next setting is pin depth which we're not going to be using today but basically what this means is you can alter where a pin lies um, um, in the layout um, so for instance let's say you had a picture of a person uh, and uh, they've got a hand in the, next to their face hot, held up in the air and you decide to use the puppet warp to move that person's hand in front of their face which you could do so you'd probably lay pins obviously on the hand and you would lay pins uh, around the face area um, so you move the move the hand and it's over the front of the uh, front of the, the person's eyes let's just maybe you decide that you want to move that hand to behind the head well by using the pin depth you can actually get the uh, get the puppet warp to move that the hand pin to behind the pin that's on the face so eventually it, it changes the depth in the image bit hard to explain easy to view if you look up um, on photo touch I'm sure there's some good tutorials that explain pin depth uh, but it's not something we're going to be using here today. The final one is rotate, and again, I'm going to show you how uh, rotate works in a second. Now, before we go any further, I've actually come out of Puppet Warp. I just click, click the escape button and come out of there. I want to adjust this layer and convert it into a, a smart object because it means we can keep going back into the Puppet Warp and make fine adjustments if we want to, which is a, a big a big plus um, compared to things like the Liquify tool, which uh, which you couldn't do. So uh, it makes sense to convert this to a smart object and then go back in, uh, and then we've got a lot more control and uh, flexibility right so that's now converted to a smart object I can go back to edit and to puppet warp now what we need to do now is to add some control points the control points are exactly that we just click on the image in certain areas like the top of the building and you can see there it's laid down a little pin now these pins are you for both uh, uh, manipulating the uh, the image and also for locking certain areas down that uh, shouldn't move so much uh, within the image so uh, we can do that we'll go around the image and do that in a second you can choose at this point to cl click on the show mesh if you want to uh, but most people including myself find it a little bit complicated not complicated but a bit confusing uh, while you're laying down a pin so I'm going to turn this off so what do I want to do with this image um, 
I basically want to kind of shrink this canopy area a little bit so it doesn't look so distorted uh, in the final image. So to do that, I'm going to lay down some of these pins, as I said. And we're not going to be using all of them, but they are important just for helping us control which parts of the image are going to get more manipulated than others. And so we're going to get, cl click around the image like so and uh, make sure we've put enough control points down to avoid us having any problems. And I'm going to carry on doing this and I'll come back in a couple of seconds. Right, so now I've put uh, a fair few control points down. If you right click on a control point, let's say you don't want to delete one, you can uh, delete the pin just by using the contextual menu there like so and if you obviously you can put that back in and uh, if you want to click uh, select more than one control point at a time if you use the shift key you can highlight several at the same time okay which is sometimes useful so let's make our first adjustment okay so I've added a couple more control points let's uh, first select this pin and remember what we want to do here we want to sort of take some of the distortion that we've got in the top of this canopy uh, and uh, so shrink it a little bit and uh, generally just sort of straighten it up a little bit so let's select this pin I'm going to just drag it down slightly like so and again with this one a bit too far you can also use the arrow keys on your keypad which is a bit easier like so. Now bearing in mind as I said this, this church is quite rustic so we can get away with a little bit more than we could or maybe on a, on a more modern building. Um, probably need another pin there and just highlight. So we're just, we're just nudging this. I'm just using the keypad as I said just to nudge this a little bit. So uh, that's what we've done. We just keep nudging these a little bit at a time and uh, like so um, you don't need to make massive changes here so let's click enter that will process the picture and let's have a look um, uh, on our before and after uh, there's before and there's our after so quite a big difference there we'll go back in and fiddle with it a little bit more uh, let's just click on the um, on the smart filter the puppet walk there that takes us back in and let me just show you something else over here that's not quite finished but it's nearly there don't need to do much more with it uh, if we select say um, I don't know let's set this pin here I'm just going to show you this rotate in fact we'll, we'll click on this pin up here on the cross if you hold down the alt or option key you'll see we get a little circle appear and it, what this means is we can rotate on that point, rotate the image. You can see that cross is now moving, like so. Um, and this is great. So if you're, say, manipulating someone's arm and you want to bend their arm at the, uh, at the, um, say, the elbow, uh, this can help. You know, help uh, you rotate uh, objects using uh, using that control. So there's another little, uh, another little tip. Um, and I think we're about done. So let's just press. Uh, I'm gonna actually undo that because I don't really want that uh, of that doing. Let's just press Enter now to come out of there, and we'll show you the final before and after. So let me just show you the before and after. Let me just zoom in a little bit first of all. So uh, there's the uh, there's the before, and there's the after. So you, it's very very subtle. You're probably thinking well, what you're worried about, but it, uh, it's one of those things that really bugged me about this picture, and it just makes it look less composited than it uh, did do before. So I hope that's been of some uh, of some use to you and giving you just a little bit of an insight into uh, the Puppet Warp. It's got so many uses I can't begin to tell you. Uh, I've seen it used uh, to fix panoramic stitching, uh, problems with that. I've seen it uh, opening up a model's eyes a little bit further, making them smile. Uh, it is a really flexible tool. It's a little takes a little bit get, getting used to. I've used it a few times now and uh, as I said I'm finding lots of uh, different uses for it so uh, a really great um, upgrade for, certainly for me um, in Photoshop uh, Creative Cloud uh, and there's quite a few others which we may touch on in the future. Anyway thanks for watching and I'll catch you again soon. Cheers!